What's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean and today I want to talk about the hate and the love relationship with your fans. And to do that, like one of my other videos, I'm going to use the adoption curve. Hopefully you watched that video already so you have a good idea of what the adoption curve means and how it relates to other subjects. But for this subject, as far as your relationship with your fans, what you have to realize when it comes to fans and the dynamics of the relationship with fans. The early adopters, they have narratives. And this is kind of how you help yourself to target your niche as well. Early adopters have this psychological narrative where they have an identity with finding music first. They want to be on to something first. They're the people who take pride in knowing that artist that no one else knows. And some of you are probably like this as well. And when it comes to your fans, at some point you're going to get these type of fans. But what happens when you move to the early majority. I know this is kind of far into the future for some of you, but this practice and understanding I think will help you understand and build with your fans from the very beginning. When you move to the early majority, that's really when you're gonna start to see quite a bit of hate from random people in general and then even some of those people who called themselves your fans before. Bro, I remember when you cared about the people. You changed, girl. I mean, he's straight. He's just not as good as he used to be, though. Understanding this is so important to use for feedback and bettering yourself in your career and also keeping your sanity. What you'll often find is those people who have this narrative of being on to something early will not like something once it's liked by the majority regardless. And we all have this with something. It's not necessarily the worst thing in the world. It just is what it is with some things. That's why people literally say, man, I liked them before everybody else knew about them. It's kind of a selfish thing. Those fans don't really want their people to grow. They want to have them to themselves because it makes them feel special. It's in conflict of how they identify themselves. And this is something that you're kind of going to not have to pay attention to. And some of you guys might find this still while you're pretty relatively small as artists. But what's important to remember, oftentimes these fans or just these people in general, they don't know you as a whole. They only know what you got branded as. And branding is a piece of you amplified. So sometimes music can be a different side of you and they think you're changing up, but they don't really know you in the real life. They don't know you as a person in all facets. Rebranding and understanding how to do that is something that becomes really important there. Kanye, 2 Chainz, they rebrand themselves very, very well. But then there's one other great point. Fan feedback is not always invalid. Some of those voices will be right. And you have to understand and differentiate between those two things so you can know how far off path because it becomes pretty difficult to be consistent over time, grow at the same time, and then keep everything together. Growth, especially fast growth, is just a hard painful process. That's what growing pains is. Anybody out there who had a growth spurt, you know your knees hurt a little bit or just, just something hurts. So what's the point of this? Again, just to understand what you will go through as you grow as an artist, understanding how to take feedback and apply it. And there is a separation between really true fans who are for you as a person and just pushing you as an individual. Some of them might even be delusional and just accepting everything you like. And then you have the fans that are really for you and put pushing for you as an individual, but they still have the ability to remain objective and let you know, hey, you tripping. Then you have those other fans that are fans for the season and as long as you fit their criteria of being early on and edgy enough. But the moment you get bit too big, you just aren't cool enough. You were accepted by too many people for their liking because they identify as somebody who is an outcast. And of course, you got the early majority who just probably didn't hear about you because there's so many people to hear about. So they'll become fans until they find out about you later. And there's enough awareness of your brand out on the market. And then the late majority, those are those fans that aren't really creating something new and cool. And sometimes for some people, them liking you can be the death of you. Because when they get seen liking your stuff, other people get turned off because those people are just undeniably not cool. It's subjective but y'all know what I mean. And of course, them laggards, ain't nobody worry about them damn laggards. That's it, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Y'all found this helpful, go ahead and share this thing.